Hey everyone, how's it going? How's everybody doing tonight? So as you can see, I'm in a little bit of a change of scenery tonight. I'm gonna to be showing you what's in my supplement cabinet, which is right behind me. So I thought this would be fun, so we can kind of go over that today, see what I have in there. Maybe something interests you and you can ask me questions about supplements and I can kind of go over what I take them for. Or there's probably things in there that I don't even take right now, but maybe I've taken them before. So kind of go over that and I'll be answering any of your questions that you have. So how's everybody been? How have things been going for everybody? I hope you've had a nice week. I hope you're all doing well. I can't believe that it's already almost the middle of February. So time has just been going by, like flying by this year. So um, yeah, so excited for the tour of your supplement cabinet. Great, I'm excited to show you. So I hope you like it and I hope it's helpful for you. So I'll just give it a couple of minutes before I start. But um, yeah. Hi, sounds like a good session tonight. Great, I'm glad you guys are excited. Um, if you, you know, are excited for this, if you like this video, then let me know by giving it a thumbs up um, throughout the video. And then that way I know, and maybe we'll do some similar things to this. Um, also, let me know if you can hear me okay. I have my mic up. I hope it helps better. Okay, so why don't actually we start with what is everybody's kind of go-to supplement or what's the supplement that you take every day um, or maybe you don't take it every day but if the most frequent one that you take let me know what supplement is that and then I'm going to show you mine go-to one so here is the supplement cabinet this is all mine on this shelf um, that one some of mine some of my fiance stuff and then we have some extra stuff at the top This is my go-to supplement. So this is a B complex. So a B complex has all your B vitamins in it. So if you're not familiar with the B vitamins, maybe a lot of you are familiar with like, probably familiar with B12, which is a common one, um, but there's other ones. So there's B1, B2, B3, B5, some of them skip, uh, B6, B12, and then biotin, which is B9, and then folate is also in there as well. Um, or is folate B9? I forget now. But anyways, biotin and folate that are also B vitamins. So this is my like go-to. I always take this every day. Uh, your B vitamins are helpful for supporting overall energy. So they'll give you a nice, gentle support of energy. If anyone's taken a B complex... Um, I don't know if you've noticed, you probably have, it will make your urine like a bright, like fluorescent yellow, neon yellow color. So that's from the B complex. One of the B vitamins in there does this. So this is a really nice, gentle, and um, like safe uh, supplement for most people to take. Of course, if you take medication, see if there's interactions, but it really is a nice general help and helps to support your energy, your red blood cells, and just overall helping you feel good. So this is my go-to. I will take this one um, most days when I remember to take it, but if there's any supplement I take, it's always the B-complex. So that's that one. Has anybody taken a B-complex? Let me know. What do we got here? So vitamin D and a multivitamin, nice. So those are great. Um, calcium, magnesium, and omega-3. Good, you guys are taking some really good supplements. That's great. Okay, I don't take B supplements. Yeah, so B supplements are a good one. It's a nice one um, to take. Yeah, you can hear me a lot better. Good, well, I'm like talking right into the mic. I think it's just, when I'm at the couch, it's too far away from me. So, okay, let's go on to another one. Okay, so you mentioned this. So this was mentioned by John. So the vitamin D. So this is vitamin D. And I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with vitamin D. So who here takes vitamin D? And then also let me know like who here has had their levels, the vitamin D levels tested. And we've talked about this before. Um, the vitamin D is important for our bone health and 
um, also for our mental health and our brain health, but it, a lot of us know it, how it's helpful for our immune health. So vitamin D is really important for that as well. But I always say it's good to get your levels checked. That way you make sure you're taking the right dose because maybe you're just taking 1,000, 2,000 I use uh, units a day and maybe you're deficient and that's not enough to boost it up. So that's vitamin D. Does anybody take that one? And then I'm going to tell you which one you should pair it with. So the next one. So vitamin D, you should pair it with magnesium. So uh, somebody had mentioned calcium and magnesium, probably in, maybe in that calcium magnesium supplement. Maybe there was vitamin D as well. No. Yeah. In the, maybe. Um, so magnesium with the vitamin D helps to absorb it. So this is another one that I take. So the ones I'm showing you right now are the ones that I take um, regularly. So the B complex, the vitamin D, and the magnesium. So magnesium's great if you have um, like muscle aches, if you have anxiety, if you have stress, which most people have, um, if you also find that you have like you're more constipated, there's different forms of magnesium. And that's like a whole other topic that we can go into. But the magnesium, this one is magnesium bisglycinate. And this one's really good for helping with that stress, the muscle tension, um, anxiety portions of things, and then helping for sleep. So a lot of people like taking magnesium before they go to sleep. Does anybody here take uh, magnesium? Somebody said like, yeah, calcium, magnesium. But this one, yeah, is the one that I take as... I don't know if it's blurry for you. But that's the one that I take. Um, so that's magnesium. Okay, so uh, no. So it sounds like most people haven't really taken B supplements. So that's a good one to, like I said, give you a nice gentle boost of energy where you don't have to take herbs. Um, so that's a nice one. I take vitamin D tablets, have never had levels checked. So it is good to get your vitamin D levels checked just to know how much you're taking and how much you should be taking. A lot of times we can be deficient, but you might not know what your levels are until you check them. So if you just get them checked through a blood test, then you take the appropriate dose. You can go online and calculate how much you should take uh, based on your weight and based on your levels. And then if you take it with magnesium, it helps to bring it up more. Okay, let's go on to another one. What do I got? Okay, so this next one is a vitamin C. So does anybody here take vitamin C or have you taken it in the past? So vitamin C tends to be very um, popular around this time of year when it's like cold and flu season. So this vitamin C is 500 milligrams um, and it also has like if you see it says like with flavonoids so that just means it's with the extracts from um, orange which has additional benefits when you take the extract from a plant rather than it just being isolated vitamin. So it, it's very good for helping with your immune system like I was talking about helping with just overall energy levels as well it helps to absorb some of the other vitamins and minerals um, helps to absorb collagen too so if anybody takes collagen taking vitamin c with it can help absorb it as well so it's good for like your skin hair and nail health as well um but yeah this one I don't take on a daily basis maybe a couple of times a week uh, maybe more so when it's like the winter time like now, but that is vitamin C. All right, what do we got next? So many. Zinc. The next one's zinc. So this is zinc. Um, zinc I don't take that often. This one's also helpful for the immune system. Does anybody here take zinc? If you do, then you'll know that um, you have to take it with food because it's quite hard on the stomach. And then also just be careful with how much zinc you're taking because you have to usually balance it out with having copper. Sometimes you'll get a supplement that has copper in it so you can have it balanced. I don't think this one has the copper in it. No. 
yeah this one's just zinc so does anybody take zinc um or what like it's, it's helpful for so many different things it's helpful for hair like hair loss as well so it can be helpful for that the immune system for helping with healing wound healing uh zinc is a good one but yeah like i said i don't take it uh daily okay let's let's do something a bit different so this is what is called a tincture so a tincture just basically means it's a liquid extract of the herbs in a little bit of alcohol and mostly water. Um, so is anybody familiar with this one? Have you ever taken this one? It's called Echinacea and it has Echinacea. So maybe you've heard of Echinacea, you've taken Echinacea before. Um, it also has Golden Seal, which is where it gets the seal part of. And then a couple other herbs like myrrh and um, cayenne and wild indigo so this is a really good one if you are getting sick if you have a cold or a cough it's an infection fighter so it really helps with fighting off like a cold and if you're feeling sick um this tastes horrible <laughs> it does not taste good at all it i usually have to mix it in it says water and i usually have to mix it in juice because it just does like it's really strong it's a strong taste uh, because of the herbs so this one I would say like as you can see it says on it like cough and cold infection fighter to help with a sore throat mouth and or throat infections as well so it's more like upper respiratory it's not like lower like lungs and stuff um, more just for a cough and cold so it's a really good one um to have and like this one again I just use in the winter time if I ever feel like I'm getting sick it's not like something I take daily so that's that one okay we got a tea here so this is fennel tea um what about teas like what's everybody's favorite tea flavor if you have a favorite tea do you like black tea, green tea? Um, this one's fennel. This one's nice for helping with digestion, for helping if you had a heavy meal and you need something. But I don't know. I don't really have a favorite tea. Like I do like fennel and I like chamomile um, in the evening. And then if I had a tea during the day, I would have like a black tea or a green tea. But yeah. Um, let me know what your favorite tea is. This is a good one, fennel. What else we got here? Oh, okay. This is this is a good one. This is this is ginger. So this is just a extract of ginger. Actually, I have two. Um, I'll show you the other one after, if it's in there. So this is ginger. These are ginger capsules. So ginger. I've talked about this a lot here before, but ginger is good for helping with nausea but then also helping with pain and with helping with headaches so it is an anti-inflammatory okay, i don't know if you can see it i'll let it hold it up um, it is an anti-inflammatory so it is helpful for pain and if you have headaches if you get chronic headaches if you have period cramps um, it's been studied and it's very helpful for that so ginger is a really good one and then digestion for sure and nausea so again, this is one that I don't take this one regularly. It's just as needed if I need an extra support. So that would be ginger. Oh, I have this in here. So this isn't really like a supplement, but this is a dandy blend, which I think I've talked about before too. So it's that, in, it's like um, a coffee substitute. Dandy blend, instant herbal beverage with dandelion. Caffeine free, no acidity, no bitterness. Um, it's a powder. I've talked about this before. Like, if you want to have a substitute for coffee, um, if coffee irritates you, like if coffee hurts your stomach because it's pretty acidic, or if you don't want caffeine, it's got that like earthy kind of flavor to it and it kind of smells similar to coffee, but it's not exactly like coffee. But it is a good. Um, substitute so it's yeah I don't know has anybody tried this I, I like it like I like it having it hot you can also have a cold 
but I like just having it hot with hot water and a little bit of like milk in it or whatever what else does it have in it it also has roasted barley extract rye chicory root and dandelion and sugar beet so that's what's in it okay so this is the other ginger this one's chewable and this one i find is better for if you are traveling if you get car sick easily having ginger um, can be helpful for that and having it chewable you don't have to worry about having water with you to have it so ginger is a, a good one to have i find that this is a good one to have all right what's happening in the comments does anybody have any questions about the ones that i've mentioned so far took vitamin c in the past so somebody says they take vitamin c nice no zinc heard of echinacea so some of you heard of it echinacea is nasty but it works yeah yeah seriously it is nasty but it works um i tried that dandy blend and it was pretty good yeah so it is, the dandy blend's pretty good it's a nice substitute um but yeah so out of these ones the ones so far that i said i take daily would be like the magnesium the vitamin d and the b complex um oh okay what do we got here this is a tiniest bottle of oregano oil of oregano has anybody taken oil of oregano before I don't take it that often again this is one of those things i like having things for like if i am feeling sick or if i feel like a cold is coming on i will take oil of oregano this one also ha burns a little bit um like it's strong it's pretty strong uh you you can put it directly under your tongue and then like drink water to take it back or you can mix it in um what's it called uh, water or something too but I find that it, I don't know I don't find it as bad as the echinacea one that one is just I find really bad this one is it, good so it's also good for helping with um if you even have like a stomach infection if you got food poisoning oil of oregano is good for that because it, it helps with with uh killing off like infections um antibacterial and stuff so oil of oregano that's just a repeat of the ginger back there oh, okay this one i don't take this actually this is really old <laughs> does it expire it expires in july so this is a digestive um enzyme so i'm not sure if any of you are familiar with digestive enzymes or what they do but um they help with breaking down your food basically help you digest and they have specific enzymes in them which are protein so for example it has lactase which breaks down lactose so if you're like lactose intolerant or if you have difficulty digesting dairy um, having a digestive enzyme after a meal or before you took them before a meal too it can be helpful um, and basically just helps breaking down food i do not take this one i have not taken it in a very 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 long time it's very old <laughs> so that's that's that one can you take dandy as a shot like espresso can you make it yeah yeah you definitely can make it as a shot like you can take it as an espresso espresso shot um you would just make it a little bit more concentrated let me see if it says i think it yeah so if you want it as an espresso you do um one teaspoon to a tablespoon of water or no i guess you take one teaspoon up to a tablespoon that's how much you could do and then you would just fill up water in your espresso cup if you want it like a coffee you take a teaspoon in eight ounce of water so yeah it's just it's a, a more concentrated yeah um yeah that's a good combination of supplements most of them you take daily no so the ones i take daily are the b complex the magnesium the vitamin d and actually two more which are in my fridge i'll get them after 
omelet du fromage a cheese omelet what do we okay let's see what else we got that's another magnesium okay got another thing here so this is another herb this is lemon balm i'm just seeing if this is still usually tinctures don't expire that's another good thing about tinctures is like their expiry dates are quite a while like this is 2024 and i feel like i bought this like two years ago and that's just because the alcohol helps to um keep it like helps to preserve it better so this is lemon balm so lemon balm is good for a couple of things but on here you can see it says stress so it is helpful if you feel stressed out if you have anxiety even if you have like racing um thoughts or your heart is racing and you feel a little bit like um sweaty and just that kind of anxiety um just something to like calm you down calm down your nervous system this is really helpful for that and then the other thing that it's helpful for is that nervous tension in your stomach and helping with digestion so has anybody taken lemon balm um or if you are you familiar it's similar to chamomile in the sense of like how it works for digestion but it's a bit better for the anxiety portion of things. So lemon balm is really nice. It's a really nice, gentle, uh, calming herb. Uh, yeah, it says restlessness and agitation on it. So it's a nice one. That one I don't take that often, but if I want help with like sleeping or if I'm really stressed, it's a good one. I've had it okay so yeah somebody had lemon balm nice um okay this is a different kind of supplement um this is called arnicare has anybody heard of arnica arnica is how a plant and like it can be helpful for pain for helpful for swelling helpful for after surgery so this is a good one it's actually based on homeopathic medicine so homeopathic medicine is a very different sort of medicine where they take the extracts and it's very very diluted and very very little um, the way it works is very different but it can be very helpful if you match it properly to what your symptoms are so this would be matched for somebody that has bruising for pain for muscle pain inflammation um, injuries it's good for children very safe in children these are dissolving tablets so yeah this is arnica arnica and arnicare and it has more things in it more than arnica but interesting um it can be helpful yeah for for that stuff that i was mentioning is that for bruises yes it can take it and you can also buy it topically but these are pills that yes you can you can use it for bruising it's 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 um in tablets but yeah it still will help with the bruising can you see it? I feel like you cannot see. Has it the? There you go. You may see it now. It's on a care and the price is on it too. Okay, I'm gonna go grab the two things from the fridge and then that will be my last two. All right, so this is omega-3, which is omega-3 fish oil. I think somebody mentioned before that they're taking omega-3. So omega-3 is another one that I take daily. And when I say daily, I mean like when I remember. So maybe six, five to six times out of the week, maybe sometime one day or two days, I don't take it. Um, so omega-3 is really good for helping with many different things. It can help some support your mood, your brain health. It can help reduce inflammation. It can help just give you a good source of omega-3s, which are helpful for overall health. So that's one that I really like keeping in my uh, medicine cabinet and taking every day um i personally don't like like eating fish so 
I find like getting it from the supplement source is helpful. Um, so yeah, that's why I, I do take it. But does anybody take fish oil? And have you noticed any changes with taking it? That's that one. And the last one is a probiotic. I don't take this one um, every day. I take it, I cycle. I cycle on this one. I cycle on and off off my probiotic. So right now I'm currently taking it, but I don't like to always take it um, if it's not needed. I feel like if it's not needed, I don't take it. So right now I am taking it just because I feel like I'm stressed and my gut is acting up a bit, but this one is a blend of different different strains. So I think I was talking about this before. You want to kind of have um, a blend of different strains, and I think this one has um, 11 billion, and then it has maybe about one, two, about 10 different strains. So that's, yeah, that's that. So that's everything. The other stuff I don't take. Oh, and then I got bone broth up there, bone broth powder, which I haven't used in a while. Bone broth powder. Um, I like having that as an extra source of protein and some collagen. But um, yeah. Okay, let's see. Questions? Anybody have any questions? Is that for bruises? Yeah, the Arnica was for bruises. Is omega-3 good in pill form? It is. I just personally found that like when I would have the pill form, I would get those fish burps <laughs> so much more than when taking the liquid form. Um, I don't know if it was because like when the pill like opened in my stomach, I would get the fish burps. But I personally found that taking the liquid form helped with not having as bad of the fish burps. So, but yes, it's still good in pill form. That's liquid or pills. My omega-3 is liquid. I take fish oil here and there. Yep, that's great. Need to be more consistent with it. Yeah, it's a good one to get some, especially if you don't have a lot of omega-3s in your diet, getting it in that uh, supplement form can be helpful. So other sources of omega-3 would be like flax, walnuts, um, or those are pretty much hemp hearts, seeds and stuff, but yeah. Uh, yes, that's omega-3 that I take, great. How long can probiotics be taken for? You can really take them for as long as needed, but I just say don't take them unless your body doesn't need them. Because if your gut health is already doing fine, then like why add something to it when you don't need it? If you're healing your gut, then I'd say definitely it's important to take it. Usually I will just take it when I feel like I more so need it. Um, in the past, I took it for maybe three or four months at a time, but I would definitely say just take it if you need it. Okay, so that's all my supplements, I think. Yeah, that's pretty much everything. Um, so does anybody have any questions about any other supplements? Um, yeah, that you wanna know about. Is salmon good for mega-3? Yes, so the good sources, like the best sources of um, um, like good quality omega-3s from your, from fish like from fatty fish is salmon um mackerel anchovies sardines and herring those are the best ones and i know people don't always like those ones but those would be the best ones to get um good sources of your omega threes but salmon's usually one that people typically have but yeah salmon's good Um, okay, so if you all like this video, let me know, give it a thumbs up, and then if you want, in a couple of weeks or in a future one, I can do a tour of my fridge, maybe, <laughs> and you can see what we have in there, um, if that would be something that interests you, if that would be helpful to see what I stock in my fridge, uh, let me know. is coleslaw good yeah so coleslaw i i would say always is best probably to make your own rather than buying the store-bought and that goes for most things because you don't really know what they're putting in there are they putting like a lot of um oils that aren't the 
greatest type of oils? Are they putting a lot of inflammatory oils in there? Are they adding in sugar or extra sauces? But if you just make it with based on like the ingredients of cabbage and anything else, you make your own, it's a good source of having some good fiber and getting in some good vegetables. What supplement is good for arthritis or swelling? So the ginger, like from what I have would be the ginger would be helpful for pain. The omega-3 is helpful for swelling and inflammation. And then something like turmeric can be helpful. Um, some of, some different herbs, like one's called devil's claw, that's specific and help, helping with arthritis. But I would say the general ones would be turmeric, uh, ginger, and the omega-3 are helpful for arthritis and swelling. Is it okay to eat coleslaw every day? I'm not very sure what's in it exactly. Yeah, so I would say like you really want to see what's in it um, and maybe there's something in it that you're eating every day that might not be the best for you. Generally, like having a diverse diet is the best thing for your gut microbiome. So changing up what you eat so you're not always eating the same thing. Um, maybe changing up what's in what you put in the coleslaw but you said you bought it so I would say yeah you want to see what's in there I often get nauseous after eating coleslaw for my whole life it's so weird yeah maybe there's something in there that's bothering you potentially one of the um like some one of the sauces or the fillers or an, an extra ingredient that's in there I would say try a different one or try making your own and isolating out what's the ingredients that are in there to see which one is irritating you because you don't want to have something if it makes you feel nauseous. But we got ginger for that if you feel nauseous, so. All right. Yeah, so like I said, the ones that I like taking are the B complex, magnesium, and the vitamin D. I'd say those are my three, like, and the fish oil, four staples that I take. Um, and then kind of just go from there based on how I'm feeling. I would say like you, when you're like deciding what you want to keep in your supplement cabinet, I would say it's always good to have something for when you get sick. So like for example, the echinacea or the oil of oregano or what I had. So something for when you get like, because those are typical things to get a cold or flu. Um, so something like that. And then something for stomach upset because that can happen often where you, you know, get something something upsets your stomach so whether that be you need enzymes or you even need apple cider vinegar can help with digesting or if you have a stomach um, infection something like that I'd say those are two good things to have in there and then maybe something for like sleep and and stress so that could be lemon balm melatonin lavender those are some good ones I just can't eat it and it's such a shame because I love the taste but I find myself nauseous after a while of eating it and it always happens that's so strange um yeah so there must be like if you love it you gotta ask yourself like what do you love about the coleslaw and you probably are something in it is bothering you and you have to see is there other foods that are bothering you as well or is it just coleslaw I've only tried the store-bought one yeah do you eat it? Personally, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't eat it. I just, it's not part of my, um, like go-to foods, but it is a very popular thing. So I would see if you do like it, try making your own and seeing if you can find a recipe that you like and see how that goes. How much vitamin D do you take? I, I kind of just like take, I don't know I think I think I think take around three or four drops so three to four thousand I haven't had my levels tested though in a while the last time I I tested them they were okay um, but I probably should follow up and get them tested maybe it's the cream in the dressing it's literally just cold sauce yeah maybe there's a cream in the dressing um, and the way it like just mixes and ferments I don't know I just love it because you can eat it alongside a sandwich or something yeah try yeah try having it making a different one or something um yeah it has mayo 
I believe it has mayo in it. So maybe they have some, maybe it's the mayo or something. Yeah. Hopefully you can find something. If anybody has any suggestions for other things similar to coleslaw, you please let Irene know in the chat. Uh, yeah. So does anybody have any uh, like supplements that they take that they like that they want to share with us or what they keep in their supplement cabinet that they find helpful um the other one i mentioned was collagen i do have collagen over there that one i like having that as an extra source of protein if i'm making a smoothie or something like that um which i find helpful mm, can be helpful for hair and skin and nails joints good one I think that I think that's it and then I have a bunch of other teas but yeah that's that's really it teas are another good thing to stock up on like having teas that are helpful for your stomach having teas that are helpful for when you get sick um I always like carrying one in the winter time that's the throat coat one that one helps if you have like a scratchy throat or irritated throat and then I like having something for calming and rela relaxing before bed so those are the I like having those too. What are your thoughts on kombucha tea? Is that different than like the kombucha in the bottles? I'm not sure what the tea one is. I'm, I'm familiar with the kombucha, like the cold kombucha and the bottles. Those ones, I would say like, it's okay to get, to get some probiotics from it. But on the other hand, they have a lot of sugar in them that's the only problem is they do have a lot of sugar so if you're somebody that's watching your sugar if you have to be careful with how much sugar you have then that's just like you're getting sugar from a drink that way and I don't like that because you're kind of just drinking sugar there are ones that have less sugar which are better but they do need the sugar to help ferment it to get that kombucha thing so um but it is okay to have I wouldn't say having it every day though uh, and like the bubbles and the the acidity like the bubbliness can sometimes cause bloating for people like when you have uh, soda and stuff like that sometimes it cause bloating so yeah Okay, well, I'm gonna put these back. So I hope you all enjoyed my supplement cabinet tour. I hope it was helpful. I hope I gave you some, you know, information, maybe some supplements you saw that are new. Uh, that you haven't tried before or maybe it gave you some insight on what you can stock in your supplement cabinet um, most of the supplements as you saw I like buying the brands that are professional brands that are third-party tested that have gone through good testing and they're good quality supplements so that's another thing um, yeah that would be what I, another tip that I would say of course, they're a little bit more expensive, but they're better quality, so they're better worth it. What's your fave tea for a stomach upset? Um, I don't have it right now, but what's it called? It's called Belly Comfort. It's by that same brand, Traditional Medicinals, and it has a blend of like fennel, mint, ginger, I think. Um, I like that one for upset stomach. It really helps with that but if you can't do that then I would say having fennel would be a good one fennel is a really good one for that yeah yes thank you you're welcome yeah so maybe in a few weeks or so maybe not next week but in a couple of weeks or so I'll do a tour of my fridge <laughs> you can see what I got in there um yeah Okay, I'll leave it open for a couple more minutes. If anybody has any questions, if not, then we will end.
And if you have any suggestions for um, anything else that you want to see, like last time we had those suggestions about, what was it? The health trends and, oh my gosh, I forget. <laughs> the one that we did not too long ago. Anyways, we had those two suggestions and those ones were good. So if you have any suggestions of anything else that you want me to talk about, any other topics, feel free to leave it in the chat. Let me know. And yeah, I can't believe I'm blanking on that. Mm-hmm. all right everybody it's been nice chatting with you i'm gonna end it here and i'll see you all next week um at seven so yeah have a great night and i hope you all have a wonderful weekend see ya